breaking the wall of speech loss. How brain signals can be translated into highly complex speech. Edward Chang, University of California, San Francisco. On November 9, 1989, I was a young teenager and there's an 80% chance I was watching MTV. Thank you so much. I'm a brain surgeon and I work in San Francisco. I take care of patients that involve seizures or brain tumors that involve the parts of the brain that oftentimes require awake brain surgery. Our understanding of how speech works and the things that we map during the surgery is a very, very complex process that has to map the basic process by which we produce words. And this starts with the brain, specifically about how the brain shapes the breath. And what I mean by that is when we speak, the words that you hear from my mouth are produced by a tightly controlled process by which the breath is shaped by the vocal tract. Air comes through our lungs, it comes through the vocal tract, the vocal tract creates a noise in the larynx, which is then shaped by our mouth, lips, and jaw. That is how we create all the consonants and vowels. Our research has studied, basically in humans, how this process works during awake brain surgeries and also epilepsy surgeries where we have implanted electrodes on the brain. A lot of the knowledge that we've had about how the brain processes these parts of the vocal tract have been largely fixed and unchanged for over 100 years. This hand illustration from Wilder Penfield, one of the original and founding neurosurgeons, um, if I zoom in here, you can see some of the critical parts of the brain that are important for speech production. The areas that he has labeled as the face, the corner of the mouth, the lower lips, the jaw, the tongue, the palate, and the vocal folds. This is, accounts for two-thirds of the motor cortex part of the brain and gives rise to the very precisely coordinated movements that are producing the words that you hear. Now, we know that the brain is not a picture, but in fact a very dynamic movie. The activity in the neurons there are not just static, but ones that are dynamically changing as a function of time. This video shows you real data that is recorded from this one particular part of the brain as someone speaks a given sentence. You will see electrodes that light up when there's neural activity at that one particular electrode site. The ability to put electrodes on the brain surface to record at both the millimeter and millisecond resolution is the finest and most detailed information we have on the function of the human brain that exists. We cannot do this non-invasively yet. So this is why it does require recordings from the surgery. And I will show you a video of the brain activity that occurs when someone speaks a given sentence. Shipbuilding is a most fascinating process. What you can see there is not just a blur of activity of where the speech code is happening, but in fact, a very precise spatial temporal code. It is a pattern of activity, of electrical activity, that gives rise to all of the different consonant vowels in English. And what we have done for the last 10 years is to look at each particular electrode, millisecond by millisecond, millimeter by millimeter, to understand how that code works. How does each particular part in each one of our brains gives rise to the coordinate movements of our vocal fold. What we see is, in fact, a pattern. Uh, what we discovered about 10 years ago was not a static image of the vocal tract representation, not a picture, but a dynamic. Uh, what you see here is one of the first papers that we published that first described the patterns of activity from this part of the brain that give rise to the different consonants and vowels. For example, the ba sound that requires the closure of the lips when we say bad, or the da sound in dad requires the front of your tongue to go to the back of your upper tooth, or the sound ga 
uh, where the back of your tongue raises to the palate. We now understand the electrical code, the locations and the electrical activity that correspond to all of those movements. Uh, in fact, when you look at that code, there is in fact a map. There is a map of our vocal tract, just like we knew from 100 years ago, a map that corresponds to the parts of the larynx, the lips, the jaw, and incidentally, a secondary laryngeal cortex that we discovered in this paper. There is a, a map structure that corresponds to these different parts of the vocal tract. And what we were able to do is to construct a library, a dictionary that give rise to a neural code for every English speech sound. Each column here corresponds to a single electrode. Each row corresponds to a different part of the vocal tract or all of the 40 different phonemes in the English language. And the only purpose that I have in showing this slide is that as of three to four years ago, we had a complete and comprehensive description of how the electrical code could account for all of the different consonants and vowels in English. When we did this, we now started to think about what could we use this knowledge for? We started to think, what could this be useful for? And of course, all along, we were thinking about how can we use this knowledge to help break the wall of speech paralysis? Can we use this knowledge about how the brain produces words to actually replace that function for people who have suffered from a brainstem stroke, ALS, or severe forms of cerebral palsy? In our field of neurological medicine, one of the most devastating conditions is what we call locked-in syndrome. This is a condition where you can have intact cognition and full awareness, but have paralysis of nearly all voluntary movement. It is a devastating condition, and this is the wall that we are trying to break. Why are we focused on speech? Why not have people move a computer cursor or blink or handwrite things from the brain? Well, speech is in a different category of its own. The way that I'm speaking right now to you is on the order of 150 to 170 words per minute. Speech is special. It is the unique and defining behavior of our species. It's what we like and naturally use to communicate. So our lab is focused on rehabilitating speech, not just any way of communicating for patients, but in particular, speech uh, for patients who are paralyzed. One of the first projects we did was to work with our epilepsy patients that had implanted electrodes in the brain. Uh, we implant the electrodes in the brain in order to figure out where the seizures are coming from. And what we did was we recorded the brain activity while patients were speaking and recorded in a microphone. And we wanted to just see if we could use those neural activity patterns to create a speech synthesizer directly from the brain. The algorithm that you see outlined here is one that we developed with modern machine learning. And specifically, it's a recurrent neural network that maps brain activity to a computer simulation of the mouth in a computer. And the computer then translates those simulated mouth movements into sound that we can hear. The top part of this image is a spectrogram. A spectrogram is an image of the frequency as a function of time. And the spectrogram on the top corresponds to the recorded speech from the microphone. The bottom spectrogram is the one that was created by a computer just reading brain activity. You can see that a lot of the fine details are missing, but the gross information is there on both temporal and spectral information. In this video, you will see the brain activity controlling a robotic simulation of the vocal tract. A computer is going to take those movements and translate that into speech that you can hear you're first going to hear what was created by the computer, and then you will hear what the person actually said. So you will first hear what the computer generated in terms of speech, and then you will actually hear what the person said to compare. The print that you are seeing is sign available in wheels. The proof that you are seeking is not available in books. The proof that you are seeking is not available in books.
Shipbuilding the Demas Masini process. Shipbuilding is a most fascinating process. Shipbuilding the Demas Masini process. Isn't that cool? So, thank you. So, when we had that finding in hand, when we had that demonstration that that was possible, and people who are normally speaking, we decided to create a clinical trial that we call the Bravo trial. And the first participant who volunteered to be part of this trial is someone who goes by the name of Pancho. Pancho is a 37-year-old man who, about 15 years ago, had a stroke, a brainstem stroke. The brainstem is the part of the brain that connects the brain to the spinal cord and to the vocal tract muscles. And when he woke up from this stroke, he basically realized he was unable to use his arms or legs and un unable to speak. And he's lived like this for over 15 years. He can move his neck, and the way he communicates is with a stick that is attached to his baseball cap and then types out these letters uh, one by one in order to uh, communicate. On, with this process, he can communicate on the order of about three to four words per minute. As part of this trial, uh, what Pancho volunteered to do was have an electrode array, an array that looks just like this one here on this mannequin. Uh, in fact, it's the same configuration, an 8 by 16 channel array that records from the part of his brain that controls the larynx, the jaw, the tongue, the areas that are important for speech production that we had worked for over 10 years to decipher. This electrode array is connected to a port that he has lived with for the last three years. Every day, the signals from that part of the array are connected to a computer that translates those signals into words. The port that he lives with is something that comes through this um, scalp, and we connect a head stage that transforms those electrical signals from analog to digital and uh, amplifies the signal. Then what we do in a computer, a very large computer, is to translate these kind of signals, the signals of the brain, these brain waves that correspond to the movements of the different parts of the vocal tract into actual words. Paradoxically, we use a lot of the same tools that are now available for natural language processing, for automatic speech recognition, the things that many of you are familiar with in terms of Siri and Alexa. But instead of translating, let's say, French to English, this is translating brain waves into actual words. Again, uh, only enabled through modern machine learning. So this is a demonstration of uh, Pancho as he is actually um, speaking through a neuroprosthetic device. David from the lab has prompted him with a question, and the blinking dots means that the computer has detected that he's trying to say a word. Then it's processing which word he's trying to say. In this first demonstration, we started with a vocabulary of 50 words. We use a language model to use the statistics of the sequences of those words that he's come up with to autocorrect his sentences, to make it faster, and also um, to uh, increase the latency of the, of the uh, machine. Now, in this last example, you will see examples where the single words are incorrect at first, but the algorithm keeps track of all 50 words over time. It keeps track of all probabilities in their context, and it can use this statistical language model in order to update, autocorrect, and change the uh, words to the correct one uh, using things that all of you are familiar with when you're texting and it autocorrects uh, your spelling as well. And that is technology that is, is part of our algorithm. So Pancho is the first person in the world to be able to do this. He's the first person to be able to <coughs> have his words decoded from his brain. Um, this is happening now. We are working to make this faster. We are working to make this have a larger vocabulary and to make it more accurate. But the future is changing very quickly. 
our knowledge of how the human brain works, both regards to speech and language, is directly translating to new technologies that are exciting and will help us restore quality of life for patients that are suffering from paralysis. Thank you.